there's an exercise we do very early in the semester where we hand out to the students a bunch of small aluminum cuboids. They're sort of long rectangles, a few centimeters on each side, and then we hand them a very cheap plastic ruler, uh, you know, a 16 cent ruler from an office supply store. And we have the, 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 the cubes are machined to very high precision to be identical to each other. Um, the rulers are very inexpensive. Um, and we have them, we say, go measure the length, width, and height of this cuboid. Uh, don't tell anybody what you measured, uh, but just write down your best measurement and your best estimate of the uncertainty on that measurement. And along with that, come up with a measure of the volume. Um, uh, maybe maybe you, you, know, you, you measure the volume, say, by multiplying x times y times z, um, and an estimate of the uncertainty on that. Um, and everybody thinks this is a very silly exercise. It's, it's so easy. This is something you would do in elementary school. Here we are in our third year as physics majors at MIT. Why are we wasting our time on this? Um, but if it's so easy, then when we flip around the whiteboard and show everybody all each other's answers, if it's so easy, why are the answers also different from each other? Uh, and that is, that is a, a big moment of cognitive dissonance uh, for the students. Um, and then we spend the next, say, uh, 15 to 45 minutes really just having a very active discussion uh, about what did these error bars that you reported to us as your uncertainty on the volume, what does that really mean? Uh, why is this person's error bar so small? Why is this person so large? Um, let's look at the spread between all of the different people's numbers and compare it to what you reported as an uncertainty. Are these things consistent? Are these inconsistent? Um, for the instructor who's leading that discussion, that's somewhat of a challenge because he's about to see some numbers and, and give a lead a discussion on it, which he's never seen before. Um, inevitably, all of our instructors uh, um, you know, get up to the plate and do a good job at that. Um, but it's remarkable um, how much comes from this very simple little exercise. Uh, the students learn a lot about uh, random errors, which are statistical errors, which are something you could learn from a, a mathematics book on statistics. Uh, you learn a lot about systematic errors, which are very, very difficult and no one really has a good understanding of. Um, um, but it all comes up in this very simple exercise um, and, uh, that everybody learns a lot from. Um, in general, you know, in gen it's, it's always a challenge for a teacher um, to, to run a group discussion uh, and, and, and get the students to actually participate in that discussion. Right? That's, in general, that's always something that's tricky as a teacher. Um, you know, people want to sit back and be quiet and just hear what other people have to say. That's always a challenge. For this exercise, uh, which is usually done at the end of a three-hour session where they've been measuring other things, and then you flip around the board and show them the list of numbers, people are surprised. You know, this is something, this is numbers they just measured, and they're surprised what they see that everybody else did. Uh, it is not hard at all to get people talking. Um, and really get them all participating in that conversation.